<gasps> I got a call today, but that it's Sunday and I had to come in and just get this video done because it's been a while. Starting off, I would like to say thanks to everybody. You guys are awesome. I love discussing these things with you. There's so many small to medium business owners out there. I love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So big thanks to all of you. Anyway, so let's get going. <clears throat> Last time, uh, I mentioned I had issues with, you know, orienting the, the sheets. And that comes down to the fact that the IRC5 controller by default is in a polling state for the inputs. Yes, that's right. So that means it only checks once in a while if anything has changed with the inputs. And the polling rate was set at a thousand milliseconds. So once every second, it checked if anything had changed. That's why I was having these weird issues with sometimes it was awesome, sometimes it was way off. Anyway, the more I kept working on that issue, the more I realized that I don't even want to rely on sensors at all. I don't even want to rely on the accuracy of the robot itself, even though that's really good. Not when I have these pop-up pins there, right? If I can use those, then I can do double-sided machining just as well as I when I'm here. So let's, let's get back to that. <clears throat> Another issue was, of course, me wanting to lift just one of these HDF sheets while instead I got about seven. However, that got solved pretty quickly. I did call a couple of businesses that sell equipment for lifting these type of sheets, but they couldn't help me at all. They had no solution. So I had to like trial and error. But <clears throat> I realized that when I grab just the top one and I drag, I'm only getting the top one. And I tried that a million times and at least 9 out of 10, at least like 19 out of 20, I was just getting one. That's not good enough, of course. So I had to keep trying. And what I eventually ended up doing is I come in here and I go down until the suction cups uh, contact the top one. And for one second, I'm blowing air into the material instead of sucking it out. And since I can imagine that when the air passes the first one, it's easier to escape out the side rather than moving on to the next one. So it's kind of like hovering there on a cushion of air, if you say. And then what I do is I just start dragging it out of there by the friction of the suction cups. Works a treat. And I drag it out until the suction, the rear suction cups up there or outside and then I activate the vacuum and I start lifting of course there's three suction cups left on the rest of them so you're still gonna be lifting more than one but since we're all the way out here right now what we can do while we're lifting we're moving back inwards that way you get a shearing action between the top one and the rest and the rest just drop off maybe I've uh, inserted a few clips of that here that is, ha, ha, does have a 100% success rate so far. We'll see, I'll keep you updated. Now, okay, so I got one of those HDF. It's stuck on there. I need to place it with good amount of accuracy. And I realized, okay, maybe I can use the same feature. So I go there, I let go, and then I just drag it up against the pop-up pins. And I tried that. I was getting kind of good results, but still mixed. Mostly because of the gasket curling up and, and you know, the friction was a bit too high, especially when I put a five millimeter thick aluminum piece on top of the HDF. But then that's when I realized, oh yeah, the Kimla has this function where when you turn off the vacuum, if you keep pressing the button, it's gonna blow air into those channels to have it release quicker. But if there's still no vacuum there, that air is just gonna rush out through those ports again with the hockey table reference. So that I get really excited by then. So what I did was I gave the robot the, the, the ability to not only pop up the pins, because in case I forget, and then activate the let go of the vacuum button. So behind here there's a few new wires going through this arm and whatever. Best idea ever. So it's gonna come here, it's gonna pop up the pins, it's gonna place the sheet. It's gonna start blowing air, and while it's blowing, it's gonna drag it up to the corner. 
100% success rate so far. I'll keep you updated. Okay, let's see, where are we? Belt drive, yeah. One of the last few situations where I wasn't in a perfect control of the sheet with the parts on it up there was when tilting it off. And since the weight and the distribution and whatnot decides when it starts sliding and that's gonna be different for each sheet. So I always had to exaggerate the tilting action to be sure that it's off. And that means you're not as kind as you want to be because you really wanna just hand it off as smoothly as possible. And besides, I realized that I don't wanna cut five sheets for one customer and then five for another customer and have the sheets that I want to access at the bottom of those. So what I did was, oh yeah, I should have started with, with this. <clears throat> I, I've been having this issue with these pallets you think they're standard, but they, they vary and they're always interfering with the arms. I cannot tell you how much of a hassle that has always been. So what I decided to do, I'm going to bring in the material, put it there, have the robot lift it in. And that makes it so that I can have these fronts, make it all pretty. Looks awesome. I'm really happy with this. I've been struggling with industrial, well, any design basically my entire life. So I'm really happy that these turned out so well. Let me show you here. Yeah, it's super basic really but looks looks like a million bucks <clears throat> anyway so yeah that, that was that was that yeah and the belt drive so one customer could have their stuff there another one there and a third one there yeah the the fronts are not there they're they are over here they're gonna be mounted there with the lights and everything i just haven't gotten that far so what it means is yeah, it's a much bigger motor than now than the intro. And there's also a belt tensioner thing there. So what I do, I go in at the very furthest location in there. I measure the height. And after that, I go down as close as I want to. And I start backing out of there at the same time as that belt drive is feeding off the stuff. There's like zero friction for... for uh, it's so easy for the belt drive to get it off because it's already on a slope. And the friction... <clears throat> against the belts makes it so that it really doesn't want to go lest those be moving customer number one gets their stuff up there number two and three there super sweet and yes i can go in and lift all of them then just keep them over there and i can hand load unload them everything in here all the input outputs of the robot the kimla all the functions and everything is using the local network nothing has access to the internet there's, there's no cloud stuff <clears throat> but that makes it so that since i'm here and my phone always connects up to the network when i get here what it allows me to do is this yeah we'll see maybe it's gimmicky maybe it's not i have caught myself using it once or twice we'll see maybe if i'm over at the Bender, I get a call from a customer ordering more of X stuff. I hung up the call, I press the button, all I say is empty the table, give me an HDF, and then a three millimeter. And it starts doing that while I finish up over there. And maybe I also tell it to, you know, park the camera first if it isn't parked. Oh, and by the way, there's a new light there. Uh, and if I press the, the start button there, uh, the Kimla gets into this uh, waiting for robot mode just to visually indicate that it's waiting but the main reason for that is when it's working it's like, kind of like a work light and I got used to this in like 12 seconds so now I can't live without it I freaking love it and I'm gonna do control B to park it and whenever our program finishes it's gonna go back there and turn green to indicate Yeah. yeah. If we do a long press on 5mm, we will see that it starts indicating in blue that this is where we are going to be putting a sheet. And we have to know the height of it because 
I don't want to yeah. do that thing where it tries to remember the last U shape. I'd rather have it like this, where it goes in, yeah. checks the height. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -ba yeah. It's all about being able to run during the night and from home. So <clears throat> what I've done is I've made this U-Tab machine control. Let's have a look. It looks like this. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah, you can. So it's gonna be power on and off, reset. That reset resets those two buttons. Otherwise I need to be here physically to press those two. There's an uh, option for warm up uh, parking. Those aren't working as, as of right now, but they will next week. We've got the live view here. If we click that and wait for like a second, then you're gonna see that we get a live view from the security camera so that if we <coughs> power on let's click that and see blip, blip. that powers everything on and yeah we could uh, reset and soon run the warm-up and park the machine and then order material for for whatever so that the robot does its thing and yada, yada, yada. lovely it's so freaking lovely yeah <coughs> and to um I have made this thing night run and uh, this is not 100% done let's click away that one thing all it does is you press add to queue you get the file dialog and you choose your files that you have you know your cutting programs that are already done and then you simply press run and that's going to execute these uh, auto hotkey scripts on that computer and I can choose to run them right now or delay them to say three in the morning because the electricity is gonna be cheaper then. And then we press okay. It's gonna say waiting to start and it's gonna wait until the, the clock says zero three before it starts. And we could just cancel that and run now if we wanted to. Blah, 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 running. Those messages aren't <coughs> actually received here because it's, I need to start this up first. Anyway, just wanted to show you those. Awesome. This is for those of you who have a Kimlo machine and are using the uh, template generator or stages generator. As you may know, <coughs> all of these G codes are auto generating using that and they get applied in the order that you have created them. So, of course, in my case, I want to start with the tiniest holes, then the normal holes, then the counter sinks, cut everything out, and then cut off the sheet here. And if I didn't create them in the stages generator in that order, then they would probably just be in, in the wrong order. So this might be down there. Not excellent. So what I did, instead of going into the .x file and manually moving everything around, I just made this tiny little software thing, PC cam layer sorter, I'm calling it. It's an executable and it looks like this. <coughs> it lists all your layers and all your templates connected to those layers. What you can simply do is move things up or down, down or up, and then just press save. Make sure you have a backup because it's gonna overwrite your uh, template to layer to template.x file. Just gonna go ahead and press no because I already sorted mine. But yeah, hopefully this is useful to at least some of you. Happy holidays.